Does playing claw hammer mean I need long fingernails? Hey you guys, Johnny Banjo with The Banjo File. Thank you for stopping by. So a common question from beginners is, how long should the fingernail be on their striking finger? And there's a common misconception, even among experienced claw hammer players, that that nail needs to be longer than it really does. With some people thinking that it needs to be an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, or perhaps even more, it actually only needs to have some free edge. Even a millimeter will do. As long as it extends beyond the flesh, any additional length doesn't really add anything at all. In fact, additional length starts to work against you because the longer the nail is, the more likely it is to break, chip, or tear, either when you're playing or when you're doing tasks of everyday life. So take a look at my striking finger. I don't know how well you could see that, but it's very short. There's only about a millimeter of free edge beyond the flesh of my fingertip. And that's all I really need. Now I do also keep the fingernail of my middle finger in playable condition as well, just in case I ever injure my index finger, then I have a backup. But I have a confession to make. I am a terrible nail biter. And all the fingernails of all my other fingers, apart from the, my right hand index and middle finger, are uh, completely chewed down well beyond the flesh line. They're a mess. For instance, you take a look at my ring finger of my right hand. I don't know how well you could see that, but the fingernail is chewed well below the flesh line. But the truth is, as scraggly and chewed up as the fingernail is on my right ring finger, I could still get acceptable tone out of it. So let's see how that sounds. Now, fair warning, my technique is going to be terrible because of course I'm not used to using my ring finger and it doesn't have the strength and rigidity of my index or even my middle finger. But what we're listening for isn't, isn't my playing skill. It's the tone that I can get even with a raggedy chewed up nail such as this. Not bad. So it's a little muted because the flesh that's extending beyond the edge of the nail is muting the string each time, but it's still pretty serviceable. So don't get too wrapped up in worrying about the length of your nail or if it breaks easily, because you could still play even with a broken or very, very short nail. You do have other options as well, such as getting an acrylic nail at a nail salon or using one of the many claw hammer picks that are commercially available. These, as well as paint on nail hardener, are also options if you have an unusually thin or brittle nail or a deformed nail or you're not able to withstand the wear of striking your nail against steel strings or just to give you a, a more acceptable tone. As for the fingernails of my left hand, that's where my nail biting habit actually works in my favor. It's to your advantage to keep the fingernails of your left hand as short as you're willing to go. That facilitates fretting with the very tip of your finger for greater strength and precision. Using the fingertips is also important for getting good clean hammer-ons and pull-offs. I find that any free edge on my fretting fingers tends to be really annoying and to get in the way. And it also tends to compromise my form because I'm trying to accommodate that fingernail from digging into the fretboard, which can um, contribute to uh, premature fretboard wear. Um, I also find that if I have even a little bit of free edge on my fingernail, it sometimes tends to get hung up on the frets whenever I do slides, and that can be painful as well. So what about the nail on the thumb of your right hand? Now some say its length doesn't matter because the thumb is always parallel to the strings, even when you're doing drop thumb, and that's true. Um, mine is always bitten down anyway, so I, it's really hard for me to say whether it makes a difference. Mine, mine is just never long. As for caring for your nails, that is sort of what's the best way to keep them short? Well, biting them isn't the best way, <laughs> I could tell you that. And, and that's certainly not true for your striking finger. You don't want to, you don't want to bite your striking finger. And I've trained, I've trained myself never to chew on, on the fingernails of my striking finger or my backup striking finger. Clipping your fingernails is also a big no-no, actually, uh, especially for the striking finger because clipping actually does a lot of trauma to your fingernail. 
um, it, it flattens it out and it tends to leave um, sharp edges. So a nail file actually is the only good way to go. You want to gently file down the excess length with a good nail file. I shape my striking nail into a, a gentle curve that basically follows the natural curve of my fingertip. And that works well for me. Although some people prefer a, a blunter, flatter profile, whatever works for you. Just be sure to file the edge smooth so that nothing is uh, catching or scratching on the strings as you play. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope I'll see you in the next one.